Welcome back to the newsroom and to this edition of Focus. This time we're turning the spotlight on the increasingly tense relationship between France and Iran. Only years ago, diplomatic ties were seen to be relatively strong between Tehran and Paris, but they've taken a hit after several tense and very public rows between the French and Iranian governments. France has taken a hawkish approach to Iran's nuclear program. You may also remember the case of Clotilde Rice, the young French woman who was tried in Iran on espionage charges. For its part, Iran is complaining about the case of an Iranian engineer who's been detained by French authorities. The United States wants him extradited, accusing him of smuggling material that could benefit Iran's military. Iranian diplomats and the engineer himself say the charges are bogus and that France is running errands for the Americans. Paris's Hall of Justice. This man, Majid Kakavan, is Iranian and has been detained in France since March. The United States have requested his extradition. Washington has accused the 37-year-old man of buying sensitive technology on the Internet in the U.S. and for the Iranian military. If France complies with Washington's request, he could face up to 20 years in jail. The hearing is about to begin. 20 minutes later... The court decides that Majid Kakavan will have to wait until December to hear the final verdict. Judges need additional information on this complex case. Making any link between these items and uh, the Iranian uh, you know, nuclear you know, industries is ridiculous. I have told it before. This is just something that uh, uh, has been made by the Americans to somehow uh, you know, uh, magnify you know, the case. That's all. Nothing more. According to the United States, these are some of the incriminating objects in question. Satellite navigation systems, sensors, airborne radar antennas. Material which can have both a civilian and military use. That's what's causing the whole problem. The question is, can this help people to build nuclear installations, missiles, etc.? Well, the answer is yes, of course. The thing is, nowadays, technology is readily available. Take a personal computer, for instance. It uses a powerful video card, a supercalculator. Piecing these video cards together to obtain a powerful calculator is something which can be very interesting for them. The case has clearly taken on a tricky diplomatic dimension. The Iranian foreign ministry spoke publicly in favor of Kakavan's release. Meanwhile, Paris has rejected Tehran's offer to grant amnesty to French national Clotilde Rice in exchange for Iranian prisoners held on French territory. Rice, a 24-year-old teaching assistant, was arrested at a Tehran airport on July 1st for allegedly spying and taking part in protests triggered by Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's re-election in June. Kakavan, for his part, remains extremely cautious in linking the two cases together. He stresses that he was arrested in France before Clotilde Reis was arrested in Iran. I have been arrested here about six months ago, you know, and uh, they are not in a relation between these two things. I, I don't have any information about the items you know, for which this girl is uh, prosecuted over there, you know, and I don't think there is any relation. Majid Kakavan spent five months in custody in Paris before being released on bail in August. His passport has been confiscated and he isn't allowed to leave Paris. A French court is expected to decide on his possible extradition in January. Joining us now to delve deeper into the Franco-Iranian relationship is Ardavan Amir Aslani. He's an international lawyer and he's written a book in French about Iranian politics and society. It's called Iran, Retour de la Perse. Also with us on the line is the journalist Georges Malbruno, who's a senior reporter covering the Middle East for the French newspaper Le Figaro. He's currently traveling and joins us from Yemen this morning. Now, let me start with you, uh, Mr. Uh, Amir Aslani. There's a lot of controversy, at least here in France, whether the two cases of Kakravand and uh, Rice are connected. Do you think they are connected, at least from the Iranian perspective? From the Iranian perspective, they sure are somehow connected. The fact that uh, Mr. Kakavan was arrested prior to the Clotilde Rice matter is one thing. The fact that the Iranians have a genuine belief that his uh, constant maintenance in French prisons and compelled to stay in France is directly related to the Clotilde Rice matter. That's how they look at it. They think basically that the French have taken this young Iranian uh, merchant hostage for the purposes of being able to enjoy some kind of a chip negotiating with the Iranians the freedom of Clotilde Rice. And that's the reason why it matters whether or not the, the, these two cases are, are connected. There's talk of a possible sort of a exchange of the two. 
that's uh, pe what people are talking about. The Iranians feel that it's basically a hostage for hostage issue as the French are looking at it. But that's not what the point that matters for the Iranians. What is the outstanding issue for them is basically the uh, release of the uh, two Iranian prisoners who are in prison in France for the last 18 years now. They have asked that these two uh, Iranian prisoners be released from French prison. These are people who were involved with the assassination of Shapur Bakhtiar, the uh, last prime minister of the Shah, who are eligible as a matter of fact, legally speaking, for a conditional release as of now. The Iranians are asking the French to release these two uh, Iranian citizens that are held by the French government so as to demonstrate a gesture of good faith with reference to Iran and encouraging the French to believe that the Iranians would, as a consequence thereof, take a similar step in relation to Khalid Reis. All right, let's bring in Georges Malbrino now, who's on the line once again. Uh, Mr. Malbrino, what's your take of this story? Is there a chance of a prisoner's exchange deal between France and Iran? The French government says no, doesn't it? Yes, of course, the French government can't recognize that uh, there could be an exchange uh, because, as President Sarkozy said, we can't exchange uh, uh, an innocent uh, uh, prisoner uh, with, um, with uh, people who killed uh, Chapeau Bakhtiar. But the, the problem is to uh, now that this, uh, this um, uh, exchange uh, has been suffered from the, 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 from the crisis between France and Iran. There were uh, contacts behind the scene during July, August and September in order to reach an agreement uh, a tacit agreement, but uh, now with this crisis, um, it looks that it's, uh, it's very difficult. We had the, 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 Mr., the, the fate of Mr. Kakavan that's been postponed until December. Uh, Clotilde Rice is still at the French embassy in Tehran. Uh, on each side, uh, I think there is a. Uh, Everybody wants to, to wait a little bit, uh, especially, and to, to look and to see what will be the, 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 the future of the negotiations on the Iranian uh, nuclear issue. Uh, but um, I think that there, there was a good opportunity this summer to reach an agreement, but for that, uh, they needed uh, uh, the, the, the clotted dried affair was uh, uh, mediatized, which was not really the the, the, the best uh, the best way in order to, to solve this issue. And uh, after uh, we we had the problems with uh, with uh, Mr. Kakavan and uh, so, um, I think at the end there will be an exchange. The, the problem is in the, in the you say you can't recognize that the, the, we we do exchange. We have this uh, this affair in, in Lebanon 20 years ago. So in order to, to reach a solution, we need uh, silence and calm. And that's unfortunately not the, the case now between Iran and, uh, and France, where every, every two days or three days you, you see Mr. Kushner talking very tough against uh, Iran, and you see that uh, Mr. Mataki answering him. So this is not the atmosphere, uh, the, 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 the proper atmosphere, in order to solve this, uh, this crisis uh, between Iran and, and France about uh, the, the, the prisoners. All right, uh, let's pick up on uh, your last point there, Monsieur Malbureau. Uh, Erdogan Amir Islani, what has changed uh, between France and Iran? Why is the relationship now so much worse than it was a few years ago? Is it all about the nuclear, nuclear issue here? A uh, nuclear issue is a consequence of the change. The change occurred primarily since the election of President Sarkozy. The position that is coming out of France today is a position that is similar, if not identical, to the position that was adopted at the heyday of the Bush administration, which is basically looking at the Iranian issue with a certain degree of intolerance and not willing to basically heed to the needs and requirements of the Iranian people and regime. The issue uh, is very uh, harsh, as a matter of fact, to deal with because the Iranians are are, are saying, look, this nuclear issue may be an international issue, but it, it's not a purely French issue. When we negotiate with the European powers plus Germany, we are negotiating with six different people and the Americans. How come the French people are so, the French government is so aggressive in relation to Iran? And this is a consequence of, of the current administration in France's particularly hostile stance towards Iran and as a consequence primarily of France's pro-Israeli stance that the Iranians have a hard time digesting. All right, Dr. Van Amir Aslani, thanks very much. Thanks Thank also you. to Georges Malbrunot joining us this morning from Yemen. With that, we're going to wrap up Focus for now. Do stay with us.